Good afternoon, speakers, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you to TUC for having me here today. You've heard Erin's experience from the north. I'm from the south, from the Mediterranean. Any of you been to Marseille first before? Great. Thank you. So um, being on the Port Authority side, it was not very easy for me to find in the list that was uh, mentioned on which sort of topic I could really uh, speak. So um, I would like to share with you, as a Mediterranean port, the European challenge that we have ahead of us and what we believe the right tools we have to prepare in order to be a European gateway in the Mediterranean. But before jumping to uh, the uh, big ships, big alliances, and how to keep container flows moving, I would like to share with you the environment in which we are currently working today. French ports are located at the crossroad of two of the three biggest world container trades. 120 biggest ports in the world handled over 530 million TUs. And we've seen this morning, we've heard this morning the growth, and by 2030, we're looking at 1.350 million. Additionally, the TNT challenge for European ports is also in the picture. Europe, both north and south, move about 73 million TUs. North-South distribution is very imbalanced. The northern ports are operating the biggest share of this. And if we look at this slide here, we can see that northern ports out of the 73 million TUs are moving 49 million TUs, leaving 24 million TUs for the southern ports when looking at this trade connecting to Europe. If we focus on Asia-Europe trade, the ships are getting bigger, of course, and the concentration in the north continues. Yet, southern ports are in capacity to operate the big units. This is a fact. The port of the future, we believe, will have no problem on the seashore vertical container handling. What we think is that the port of the future will have to bring solutions to take containers in and out of the gates. And the limits of concentration, we believe, is already being experienced on the road, on the railway, on the inland platforms in the northern area. And shippers, customers, want alternative network solutions. We believe that Supply chain flows have to define a new network mapping that should include the southern alternative. There are several successful examples, and we are working in this respect. And copper, for example, uh, we believe is successful. And we are aiming at playing this role in France, in containers, but also in other flows, and at the center of our strategy in this respect, we place proactivity and productivity. The right infrastructure for each core traffic and containers also are involved. Multimodal diversified routes on short and long distance with a strong incentive to massification. And this is where our FOSS container terminals play a major role. And of course, dedicated and efficient logistics solution but also what is required, and we are working in this respect as well, is facilitating administrative formalities in order to ensure fluidity in this respect. So, from the Mediterranean, we believe that the European market offers great potential. Yes, I can see that some gentlemen in front here are smiling. It's not just a dream. We believe in this, and I will explain why. We have, we believe, a position in the Mediterranean that is strategic. Strategic because it's an open way 
up north to the French market, to the Swiss market, and even to southern Germany. And right in front of us, we have the huge Maghreb Mediterranean market as well. And I will explain why it is strategic for us. When you look at the east-west trade, it seems obvious to us that an alternative here can make sense. When looking at this position here, when cargo is originating from this area, can it make sense that it's discharged here and moved by massified modes inland versus going all the way through here and all the way up to the north? I'm not saying that things should change overnight, but we believe that it's an alternative. And this is also obvious when looking at north-south trade and obvious for, for Africa, obvious for Intramed, for South America. So let me just come back to the port of Marseille Foss. Marseille Foss because, in fact, the Port Authority is managing two major harbors, one in Marseille, close to the city, and 60 kilometers west, Foss Western Harbors. Here, 400 hectares. Here, 10,000 hectares. Only one third of our 10,000 hectares today is uh, industrialized. So it means that we are lucky enough to have a lot of space for expansion. Last year, 7,500 calls. Several liner services in Marseille Eastern Harbors, but also in Foss. 78.5 million tons were handled last year in our port. But I'm mentioning these figures just to point out that regarding containers, one point, nearly 1.2 million TUs were handled in our port. We experienced a growth of 7% on both Marseille and Foss. And when focusing on Foss, we had a 10% growth in Foss. And we, we, we heard this morning that the um, Global growth was of some 5, 6, 6.5 percent. So if we have a growth of 10 percent, we believe that it's because our customers are trusting us more, but also probably because um, the position that we are holding in the Mediterranean makes sense for them, for the shipping lines, but also for the shippers, we hope. Uh, when looking at 2015, the growth for the first quarter in FOSS uh, is of 9 percent, which is uh, uh, pretty um, acceptable. In the Mediterranean, we have a unique position. We are the only port to offer the three options for inland transportation. Of course, trucks, railway, and waterway with barges. 82% of our containers are currently moving by road. We are handling not us as port authority, but terminal operators are handling some 500,000 trucks per year. And the turnaround time for trucks inside the terminal is of 26 minutes. This is measured by the time the truck enters through the gate and until it gets out of the gate, it takes 26 minutes. This is the current situation. And this leads me uh, to talk about how we are keeping landside container flows moving. Our role as a port authority is uh, to entice operators to develop massified inland solutions for containers, whether this is by rail or by barge. We know that for long distances, road is not competitive. And when looking at barges, Per trip, it's moving 200 and over 280 TUs at a time. And of course, rail and barge generate other benefits, optimization of logistics cost, and not only of transport cost. Possibility for customs clearance during the transportation time, this is linked to the development that has taken place between the Port Authority the customs and the professionals based in Marseille to develop the sea river procedure, which is also applicable for sea and rail procedure, meaning that customers can continue haulage of their containers under customs status until final destination on the massified mode. 
Reliability and security, of course, no congestion for train and barges uh, in Marseille and Foss. And, of course, these modes respect the environment. What is our strategy in this respect? We are fostering strong relationships with inland ports. On one hand, we are stakeholders on a terminal, on the river terminal, in Lyon terminal as well. And we are promoting partnership with all the inland ports along the Rhone River and the Saône River. This thanks to Medlink Port Agency that we created recently. Of course, meant developing advantageous uh, customs clearance possibilities. This was already mentioned. Investment in major infrastructure projects to improve inland connections. This is a port authority investment and to become a strategic port for the core network and 10 T corridors. Um, of course, you know about uh, the, uh, these uh, major corridors and I will come back to that later on to, to, to explain where we are situated in this. This here is the Rhone River and connected to the Saône River. We have created Medlink ports that includes nine multimodal platforms. We have, sharehold, we have whole shares sorry, in, in those two platforms because at the end of the day, what we are looking for is ensuring that these ports are offering quality service to the customers. It's exactly like having a container discharge in our port in FOSS when it is discharged in Lyon or when it is discharged into another uh, port along the Rhone River or the Saône River. Custom simplification on, on rail and river transportation modes before this was operational, one clearance was necessary for one container. Today, whenever 200 or above TUs are loaded on a barge, only one clearance is required for the transportation of the containers until the barge reaches Lyon or any inland port on the way. Marseille Foss, we are um, connected to the TNT um, corridors number two and rail freight corridor number six, uh, which will allow us on the long run to ensure that whatever services are offered in this area, um, they are of the same quality as those qu services offered on other rail corridors uh, that are promoted by the Re European Union. Major infrastructure projects to, to improve inland connections, multimodal projects in the port. We are investing on railroad terminal, uh, in terminals in both Marseille and in Foss, increasing railway capacity and access to the port, waterway connections to terminals, and additionally, there are also multimodal projects in the port hinterland itself. Uh, with uh, these are government, uh, government uh, investments, bypassing uh, Lyon connection to the Rhine and investments in, in ports as well. A zoom on multimodal terminal projects in Marseille. This is a small container terminal in Marseille where we are developing this combined transport terminal here, 850 meters long. Uh, and the same type of terminal will be um, created in, um, in Foss along the way. So promoting multimodal solutions, river shuttles for containers, train shuttle uh, for containers. The port of Marseille Foss is not a transshipment port. We are a market port. And the market for us is not close to Marseille, is not close to Foss. The market for us is in the hinterland that is 300, 500 and more kilometers away from our port. So it is a question of making sure that we are gaining market shares when we are enticing private operators to develop this type of uh, offers for, for, for our customers. Uh, this here shows you the progress that we've made in terms of waterway traffic in FOSS. And currently, we're moving nearly 96,000 TUs and our target for 2030 is of 300,000 TUs. Our growth in 2014 for this mode of inland transportation was of 22%. Of course, 
Of course, um, in, in the northern part of Europe, it is so common to use the barge. This was not the case in the south. And it, it was a question of promoting this mode of transportation and making sure that we had operators setting up the business. Because these barges are private barges that are serving uh, these destinations. And looking at the rail shuttles in Marseille Foss, we moved 99,000 TUs last year, and uh, this represented 14% uh, growth. Five operators are currently offering direct container shuttles from Marseille Foss to major cities, of course, in France, but also outside France. Let me give you an example. We have containers today that are loaded on trains in Antwerp, moving down to Marseille, and being shuttled over to Algeria with a three and a half, four day transit time from Antwerp to Algiers. And this versus an all water service from a northern port to Algeria would be something like 10 days or even more. So several international destinations in France, uh, in, in Europe are being served today via our port. And this is something that can be enhanced uh, over the long run. We have, we have um, more services that are being created uh, practically every uh, quarter or so. Example, Clermont-Ferrand, we are now at five trains per week, Clermont-Ferrand, Saint-Étienne, uh, to marseille Force, and it was last month three trains per week, meaning that more and more shippers are using this mode and are asking for, for um, space on, this, on these trains. First of June, and this also is a private venture, a daily train connects Marseille with Foss that allows uh, shipping companies or shippers to move their containers between those two terminals at very advantageous uh, uh, costs. I've mentioned the um, rail railroad uh, Morpian terminal in Marseille. This is uh, where we will be enhancing the use of um, railway for containers just behind the container terminal here. And it will also be used for containers for domestic uh, and um, continental uh, cargo. This is about moving containers outside the port into our hinterland. Um, what about port distribution centers? This is, uh, is this also a solution to have cargo moving out of terminals because we also heard this morning, and it's true that con container terminals are not parking areas for containers. And um, this is an area in which we have invested a lot as well. Who would have voted 10 years ago for, for Provence area, Marseille, uh, for this type of, um, of offer? I don't think anybody here in this room would have voted for this area. We have today 3 million square meters of warehouses that are operational around the port here. Two of these platforms are on our property. Fuyan, 147 hectares. Foss District Port, 160 hectares. And some major names have decided to invest there in, in, this, uh, in these platforms. You have some names here. Company like uh, Maison du Monde will be moving 100% of their, of their imports through our port and to redistribute within the whole of France from the platform in our, in, um, in our area. Mattel also, IKEA. So this means that when the containers are arriving in our terminals, they can be immediately hauled over uh, to these platforms. And first this report is less than a mile away from the, from the terminal. Um, I've been um, mentioning some uh, figures about vessels being berthing without waiting time, trains being operated upon arrival for cargo, also customs formalities uh, that are taking place within five minutes. We are able to do that because um, we are measuring 
the performance of what is going on on the terminals. And um, those KPIs, um, of course, this, uh, these are three examples, but those KPIs are available, officially available, to anybody who would like to, uh, to receive them, of course. I will be concluding here. So the challenge of gateway efficiencies in land deliveries at the heart of, uh, of commercial industrial competitive uh, competitors in Europe, the role of ports is critical. Yes, we believe that the role of ports is critical. We are not terminal operators, but as port authorities, we, we can boost this approach. And we strongly believe that southern gateways will improve efficiency of fluidity of our European transportation network. And we are working daily uh, to this objective. The port and its territory, uh, of course, it's not only a question of making sure that cargo is moving. Um, we have to find the right formula of uh, integration and complementarity uh, when we have two harbors that are 60 kilometers away, when you have terminals that are really inside the city. We have to make sure uh, that everybody is kept happy at the same time. Sustainable development challenge new approach towards a constructive vision and impact measurement, of course. Uh, we have to make sure that um, we are looking at environment and ways to, to protect environment. One last question you may ask me, what about strikes in France, in the port of Marseille? Yes, that was something that happened very regularly until the 16th of February, 2011. Since that date, we haven't had a single day of strike of local strike in Marseille Foss. And this is a fact. I can answer your questions if you want to know why. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>